It was way back in November of 2020 when I and a bunch of other people first backed this project on HasLab, Hasbro's crowdfunding site. I was, and still am, a big fan of The Mandalorian TV show. I really like it. Of any of the uh, the modern Star Warses, <laughs> so to speak, that has been my favorite, uh, including all the movies and so forth. So to have the iconic ship of The Mandalorian in uh, you know, high-end toy form seemed like it would be really cool. But also I had the experience of uh, ordering and, and owning the HasLab sail barge, which I've reviewed on the channel before. You can see right up there. Uh, and I was really impressed with that. So I wanted to see what they could do with this ship and sort of a, a similar higher than usual for a toy budget. So I pre-ordered it for uh, $350, which is less than the sail barge was. The sail barge was $500, but still quite a bit of money. And I uh, sat patiently <laughs> awaiting the day where uh, it might arrive. Of course, shortly after placing my order and having it uh, be finalized, this happened. I don't know if it would have changed my mind at all to uh, see the ship be destroyed on the show before I ordered it, uh, but who knows, it might have. Certainly, I am I would guess it would change some people's minds, because up until that point, I was kind of assuming that this ship would be part of the Mandalorian in the same way that, uh, you know, the Millennium Falcon is part of Han Solo and Chewbacca's story. But, uh, at least until now, that appears to not be the case. But it's still a really cool-looking ship, and I'm still pretty excited to unbox this and see what they've done with it. So, uh, looking at the box here, you can see it is a large box. I mean, I'm having to put it way away from me. I, can, I can't even really touch it from where I'm standing. It's a large box. If we use the internationally recognized unit of measurement known as the Vintage Kenner Jabba, you can see that it's, uh, well, one, two, three and a half, maybe, Vintage Jabba's. Not nearly as big as the box of the sail barge, I will say, but it's still a hefty box. On the top, we have some scenes showing the various features in the same way that they did with the sail barge. And then on the reverse, we have the same kind of uh, line art that we have often seen on these vintage style toys and I I definitely really like this and, and, the, and the Kenner logo there is really cool so uh, honestly no complaints about the box so um, I guess all we have to do now is open it up and as soon as we open it we have some instructions Not uh, particularly long ones. Some kind of an insert about, looks just like copyrighted information or something along those lines. Uh, so like the sail barge, we've got some assembly instructions, although it doesn't look quite as involved as the sail barge was. So uh, let's go ahead and get it out of the box and see what we've got. It was easiest to open both ends and kind of push out the styrofoam from the other end. Here on the top you can see we've got the landing gear and some carbonite blocks, which we'll look at in a second. And if we open up the rest of it, you can see we have the main body of the ship wrapped in some paper, uh, the engines, some figures, uh, carded figures over there. We'll take a look at all of this, but I think the first thing I should do is put it together. There's really not a whole lot to the assembly process. There's only five things that you need to attach. Uh, you're supposed to flip the ship over and attach the landing gear first. There's a sliding cover there that's already out of the way, and you just pop it in place. Those all come out fairly easily as well. They're meant to be removable. Here you have on the back a little place where you have to open up with your fingernail and slide in the landing gear there. And then you just flip the ship around and do the same on the other side. And you've got your landing gear attached. All right, so this, let's see, I guess just goes right on here like this snaps into place. There we go. And we'll do the same on the other side. Something pretty satisfying about doing this, I'll have to say. There we are. Whoops. 
It looks like you could probably take these off again if you wanted to, but oh, that one didn't get quite on there. All right. Wow, with those on, <laughs> this is starting to look pretty cool. So next up, we are supposed to be putting on the front guns, and that's what these are here. Hopefully I've got that the right way around. Yes, I do. Of course, these swivel up and down. Nice. So here it is in its entirety, all assembled and everything. And I will have to say, it is very impressive looking. In terms of the paint job, overall it looks quite good. I think the silver is good looking. Not amazing, it's not a chrome silver, although it does have a little bit of reflectivity if you look at it in places. Uh, they've gone over it with kind of a brownish wash that Overall looks good, brings out the details, but in a few places looks a little artificial, like it's been done with a brush, which I suppose it has been. So, for example, I really like the way this yellow looks, but on top of it you can see there's some brush strokes from the weathering. You can see more visible brush strokes going along here. There's some places where it looks like it's just been inconsistently applied. So that's not fantastic, but overall that's a relatively minor complaint, I think does kind of look like the ship is dirty more than weathered in some places, which I don't love because I don't really think that matches the, uh, the overall aesthetic of the, the Razor Crest as much. So look like here, for example, there's just a big splotch. And in other places as well, it's heavier. I think it looks fine overall. Long story short, as a whole, taken as a whole, it looks really good. If you look at individual parts, there are some things that Maybe it could have been better, but uh, again, as a whole, from a reasonable distance, this looks really, really nice and not really like a toy. Kind of what I said with the uh, HasLab sail barge as well. That really, unless you're looking closely at it, could pass for a model of the sail barge, and I think the same can be said for this as well. I thought we should introduce the figures that this ship comes with as well. We have, of course, the Mandalorian himself, Din Djarin, who is, I think, quite a good-looking figure. I don't have any of the other three and three-quarter inch scale Mandalorian figures to compare him to, but I don't have any real complaints. He's got nice, clean paint lines and everything. The silver looks good. I like this uh, ragged look they've given his cloak. He comes with a few accessories, like a blaster that fits in his holster there. He's got his rifle, of course, and he's also got a jetpack that you can attach to his back with a little slot there. So, uh, no real complaints, I guess, here. In addition, the set comes with four carbonite blocks, which were sort of stretch goals for the crowdfunding campaign, and they're quite nicely done, I think. Uh, you know, they're not well, they are hollow, but they, they're at least enclosed on all sides, and they feel like they have a little weight to them, and they're nicely sculpted as well. There's a section inside where you can uh, attach them various places, which we'll look at in a few minutes. But uh, aside from that, not really a lot else to say. The set also comes with two unique carded figures. We have uh, this one got a little bit creased in the package, I see. This one, of course, is the child himself, Grogu. This is a sort of vac metalized version of the pram that he comes in, and the figure itself looks quite good. I am not going to be opening this one or the other one, just because these are unique to this set, and I don't really want to ruin that. And, it, you know, you can get very similar versions of these figures in other packaging. And I'll, that's what I'll be using myself. Uh, the other one, of course, is the off-world Jawa Elder. One of the Jawas that forced Din to find one of these eggs so that he could get his uh, ship fixed back up after they had stripped it. I like that they come with closed and open versions of the egg, as well as a bunch of Jawa weapons. Here's the back of both of those, if you want to see. And finally... It's not really a figure, but it does come with a bunch of sort of random accessories that you can use to decorate the inside of the ship. Uh, I think I'll just dump these out and let you see what they are, and then 
we'll put them in the ship a little bit later. So you get a variety of accessories here. You've got a crate and a bunch of bags and blasters and so forth. At first I thought these little balls were the joystick ball that Grogu liked to play with, but looking at them closer, they're actually thermal detonators. So uh, I suppose I shouldn't give this to Grogu to play with, huh? So I think I'm going to go through and show you all of the moving parts, the pieces you can take off of the ship, things like that, all of its little features and things. Uh, just by the way that it's been designed, it has a lot of kind of panel lines on it that you can't always tell, you know, if it's just decorative or if it's hiding a removable panel. Uh, occasionally, for example, right here you can see there's a little place where you can stick your, your thumb to remove something, but generally speaking, it's a little bit difficult to tell <laughs> what's decorative and what's not, uh, which is a good thing, I think, in reality, because uh, you can't immediately tell what is like a play feature or something like that. Uh, on the other hand, though, when you're just getting this like I am for the first time, it can be difficult to tell uh, where all the features are. So that's what I'm going to try and show you right now. Now, I should mention that I'm kind of coming at this from the point of view of someone who doesn't know a lot about what they have included in terms of the features of this ship, because it's been like a year and a half since I ordered this thing, and I haven't really kept up with all of the, you know, updates that Hasbro had been giving us, so I'm going to be rediscovering some of the features and things of this along with you. So here in the front of the ship, we have a lot of really cool detail, I think. They've got, I don't know if you can see this, but it's kind of got multiple layers. There's a layer inside and then there's you know this sort of stuff on the top and it's nicely weathered i I really like the way this looks and then they've got windows and things as well uh sort of meshed in there I, I, i'm really impressed with this we've got guns on both sides here that swivel and if we want to we can take off the canopy for the cockpit there's three chairs two in the back and one for the pilot, and some doors that would theoretically go back into the rest of the ship if they open, but as far as I can tell, they do not. If we look from the other direction, you can see they have lots of joysticks and levers and gauges and so forth, and it's all pre-painted, so you don't have to put any stickers on or anything like that, which I always like. So here we have them in the cockpit, looking pretty cool, if you ask me. It would be nice if they had included some way to attach Grogu to one of these seats in the back, because otherwise, you know, you're just sort of setting him on top of that and he's going to fall off immediately. But that's a relatively minor complaint. We can put the canopy back on and look how he would appear in flight. I think that's pretty awesome looking. So if you look here on the left side, if you move this gun up or just remove it, which is easy to do, you can get access to this panel here, which is removable. Just put your fingernail in there and kind of lever it out, and we've got a, an exposed piece of machinery of some sort. Uh, and there's a similar one on the other side. I do notice that they didn't do any kind of weathering to the inside of these panels, which is a little bit too bad. Or even really here, there's only just unpainted blue plastic, which is a little bit disappointing, honestly, given this price point. But it is cool that they have so many of these panels around. I'm going to show you them all as we look at the various pieces of the ship. Uh, you can use these maybe to pretend that the Jawas are dismantling the ship, or to have Din do some repairs or something like that, or maybe as battle damage, that kind of thing. Uh, next to it, if we look a little bit to the right, you can see that there is a gangplank, or, you know, a, an entranceway that extends out like that to take you up into the ship. Um, this part of the ship, which we're going to look at in a, in a bit, is kind of the weak point in my opinion because it's really hard to see in here. There's a lot of features actually clustered in this area, but you can't remove, as far as I can tell, uh, enough of the ship to be able to actually see it and access it easily. So I'll, I'll show you that in just a minute. 
back on top of the ship, we can see that there's a panel here that is removable, although you wouldn't really be able to tell just by looking at it necessarily, although you do see that there's this, uh, you know, little part here where you can kind of grip it. That removes that, so you can see the inside of, I guess, I mean, who knows, it looks kind of engine-y to me. Again, uh, no paint inside here, though. It's a little little disappointing, no paint on the inside of the, the panel as well. There's also something here, which is very important. It's a, a button that you can press, and when you do that, this entire top panel, which you can see here, comes off, and this is how you access the inside of the ship for the most part. So if we look at this top section that you remove to access the inside of the ship, it's got a couple of interesting features. On the bottom it has these hangers that move along on a track like this, and these are actually for the carbonite blocks that come with the set. You can see on each of the blocks they've got little notches on the top that fit in with these holders, and you know, you just can have them dangling there, you can have them move around or do whatever you want. Uh, you know, in the pilot episode we sort of saw him stacking up several of these on the ship, so that's kind of cool to see. And if we look at the top, it's not immediately obvious, but this section here actually comes off like that to reveal this escape pod. And I will say it's nice that they painted all of this, at least. It's got kind of a cool amount of detail there, actually. Um, the escape pod... I'm not entirely sure if this is supposed to be like that. It's got a little scratch on it. it doesn't Looks like it may just be, uh, you know, a scratch and not some sort of battle damage. But anyway, it opens up. It's just a hollow sort of shell that opens up like that. Not, you know, super impressive, I suppose, but uh, it's a pretty cool addition, too. Here we have the inside of the ship. More of a sort of a cargo area than anything, I guess. On the one side, you can see that there is a ladder, which is removable. So you can just kind of pop it up out of there and have it be used anywhere around the ship, I suppose, but it can be stored here. We've got various kinds of bags and other details that I think are permanently attached, but you also get, as I showed you earlier, some ones that you can attach yourself, like that. So it adds a lot of interesting detail. There's all kinds of hooks and things all around the interior of the ship here where you can hang different things. We can uh, just sort of spice it up a little bit, make it look like there's more going on there. Let's see, here's another one. All right, and this section actually uh, comes out entirely to allow you to access the inside a little bit more easily. Let's see if I can do that. Ooh! <laughs> well, there goes all the things that I just hung up. But uh, yeah, you can look through the entire side of the ship. This side does not come off. But if we want to look at what is over there, we have this sort of cargo netting, and underneath that is just some, uh, you know, detail, wall detail. Over here we have a carbon freezing chamber. Uh, one complaint I have about this, let's look at a, a little bit closer. So this door, first of all, if you have the side on it, this side, it won't open up all the way. It'll just sort of hit there. But even if you don't have the side on it, it only opens up that far and doesn't really, if you try to, you know, come up here like this, it comes all the way off. Uh, I mean, I guess that's okay. You can just take it off. But it feels a little bit weird, like they could have done a better job of designing a door for that. In any case, you can take one of the carbonite blocks and put it in there to pretend like someone's just gotten frozen. And if we look farther inside, you can see that there's kind of a shadowy 
recess there. And that's the section I was talking about earlier. So this area here, which is directly behind the cockpit, is normally really hard to see because it's underneath an overhang and, you know, it's kind of cramped in there. I have moved the camera and my lights so that I can show it to you as best I can. Uh, now this is one of those features that I either didn't know about or had forgotten about, but it's actually a toilet. Yes, the Razor Crest has a toilet. It's got a little evacuation tube there, and I guess it's some sort of space urinal or something or <laughs> other. Uh, I don't know, is this a first for a Star Wars ship? I, I think, I mean, as a toy, that is. I think it might be, I don't know. Uh, it's it's pretty hilarious that they included this, but it is a little bit too bad that it's so tucked away there. And the same is true with these other things right here, which I'm going to have to basically obscure in order to show you. But there's a thing here you can open up, a little, uh, you know, chamber there. And then you can take this, comes all the way off. And that is supposed to be where Grogu would stay. It's got a little... Uh, you know, a little hammocky type thing there. But as I say, very difficult to access and even see normally. Uh, even worse is this section right to the right of it, which I'm gonna have trouble even showing you, I think. So it's <laughs> right here. All right, this is really the only way you can see it is by looking through the uh, hatch here you can see what this is, which is kind of a opening cabinet. And inside is supposed to be where the Mandalorian keeps all of his guns. Uh, it's going to be challenging, to say the least, to get a dozen or more tiny guns attached to these little pegs, but I'm going to give it a shot. One eternity later. Wow, that took a long time. I probably spent close to half an hour trying to get all these guns into position on their little tiny little pegs and uh, you know these thermal detonators here if I can you can see these three little balls here were by far the hardest to get on there as you can see I ended up using some needle nose tweezers which helped a lot I wouldn't have been able to do this by hand at all I'll have to say after going through this I really wish that they had just made these be permanently attached as decorations because I don't really, first of all, need all these weapons for Din and I'm not going to take them out of here again given how difficult they were to get in there in the first place. So yeah, a little frustrating if I'm honest. Here on the engines we've got some removable panels as I mentioned. This one here, we've got like, you know, just generic mechanical detail, I guess I would call it. And there's one here as well. Looks pretty cool, but it's not painted as far as I can tell. It's just, well... It's not painted much, anyway. Uh, but, you know, it looks good. I'm not really complaining too much about that. And uh, it's not as though you'll probably have these panels off that often. On the Back here we have some cool uh, detail on the back of the exhaust where you've got some bluing and, you know, different colors that would happen if you had something really hot coming out of here. And of course you've got some translucent plastic inside to simulate the flames. So that's pretty cool. Um, same thing basically on the other side as well, same kind of removable panels. If we look more toward the tail of the ship, we've got several things to look at, actually. Right here is a panel you can take off and then have a gun pop up like that, which is kind of cool. And then you've also got this uh, kind of end section that comes all the way off to reveal some more detail there. Finally, underneath, let's go ahead and put these away. Underneath this is the sort of, uh, what do you call this? The cargo hold opening, I guess. 
comes open like that. And here on the sides we've got, let's see right here, another opening panel that actually let you see part way into the ship, which is kind of cool. I like that. If we go further along, there's panels. Let's see, that's the same panel. There's this, this panel here, comes off, shows more of the detail. And that is about it, I think. So here I've taken off all of the various panels and parts that you can remove from the ship. And there are quite a number of them, as you can see. Uh, if I had to make a complaint, though, it's that the vast majority of them are just the kind of thing like, you know, with the engines here where you just take off a cover and it reveals a little bit of engine machinery inside, and that's it. And it might be nice if there was more in the way of play features that you could actually, you know, potentially work into whatever it is you're going to be doing with this kind of set. Uh, you know, I keep coming back to the sail barge, but that one had a lot of stuff that made me feel like it was really a toy, like you could actually use it to reenact some of the scenes from the movie and so forth, whereas this, almost all of these uh, features are just something that you sort of take off of the outside and that's it. It's cool, but could have been a little bit better in my opinion. Finally, we have the included base, which is used if you want to display the ship in kind of a flight pose instead of on its landing gear. And uh, this part is, you know, it's fine. It's just a sort of hollow plastic base. But I was really impressed when I first picked these uh, pieces of acrylic up. They're super thick and also nicely uh, rounded off. I don't know how to explain it. They feel really good in the hand. And I'm assuming they just sort of slot in here. I don't think that got in there all the way. There we go. Push that one in. There we go. And, you know, the body of the ship is intended to sit at, a, at an angle, kind of flying upwards. So we'll go ahead and take a look at that. So I think this stand is brilliant. I really like how it looks, first of all, with the ship, but also they've made it in such a way that it kind of uh, tilts it going up, but also a little bit at an angle this way toward the viewer. Uh, and it really makes the ship look great, in my opinion. And most likely, I'll be displaying it this way instead of with the landing gear down. It just looks really cool in flight. So, in terms of my conclusion, I would say I am very satisfied with this overall. It, it would be nice if this had included maybe some lighting. I don't think it would be that difficult to incorporate some LEDs uh, and so forth. But, uh, generally speaking, super happy with it. Looks great. Uh, I think it looks, you know, better on display than most toys would, and I think a lot of people, even the kind of people who might not normally display toys, uh, would not mind having this on display. It looks that good. So keep that in mind. Unfortunately, of course, these are sold out, long sold out, and uh, they're going for at least, I think, double what people paid, if not triple or more, on eBay. But, you know, give it a little time. That might settle down. Of course, uh, with the sail barge, it hasn't really proven to be the case. Those are still going for a lot of money, so who knows? Uh, but it is worth pointing out that they did sell a huge number of these compared to the sail barge, so there's probably quite a few out there, uh, people waiting to resell when the time is right. Thanks for watching all the way to the end of the video. If you made it all the way here, leave a comment and tell me so. Go ahead and like the video as well. I'd really appreciate it. This video was brought to you with the help of my patrons from Patreon, including these Palace VIPs and Angelica Brady. If you would like to see how you can support the channel for as little as a dollar a month, you can click the link to Patreon in the video description. Thanks very much for watching.